good morning youtube this video is pretty much going to be on um a broke down truck can bring you to your knees because the dance show brought me to my knees and you know it's a lot of things that can cause somebody to get brought to their knees when they are lease operators or when they are owner operators and all it takes is for your equipment to either clunk out on you or break down or an accident or for the ones that got a fleet for your your workers to mess up your equipment by accident or just something to where your truck is out of commission it depends on how severe the situation is because even let's just say sometimes it can be a money problem where maybe the owner operator or the lease operator didn't save up enough for whatever reason maybe for a breakdown they didn't have the money to pay for services rendered or maybe it could just be the shop like in my case insurance pays is going to pay for everything and i just would have had a 500 dollars deductible but the thing is not money in my situation my situation is the shop and i would have to say over over 50 percent of the time a lot of the stuff is time and shop shop time i'm sorry but a lot of times you know shops they wait on parts they can't find the parts like especially for volvos Kenworths are almost like Freightliner, but if you got like a Volvo, by that being a foreign truck, you know, not really made in America, they have a hard time getting parts that can't get parts. So, you know, parts can hold up the fact of you trying to get your truck back on the road or just the fact that they short on staff so they don't have all the mechanics they need to do the job depending on the job it is. And like I said, depending on if you have a fleet or just one truck, you know, if you got a fleet, you probably not affected because you got multiple trucks that's bringing in money for the company but when you just a one-man stand uh, business to where you just a one person operating where you only got one truck and that one truck is down that can kill your business there's a lot of people because obviously by me doing YouTube I network with a lot of other truck drivers and I hear that stories and there's a lot of people that had to throw in the towel for situations like this to where they either had to give up the business because the, the shot was taking too long or they just had they had to do something else. Either go company for a little while until their truck got back up or they just had to help with it. You know, it's not even worth it, especially if you're in a lease. Now, if you're in a finance, you can you take more of a hit if you're in a finance because obviously that is really tied to your credit. And if you're responsible and you really care about your credit, you're not just going to try to as easily jump to say, you know what, bump this, they can have it, whatever. But in some situations, some people do. It can get so bad that, you know, you wait, wait, wait. You saw, I've heard some people trucks be down for six months. Six months in the shop waiting to get fixed. Six months. I'm, I'm going into my second month. So I'm like, that. how much more longer is it going to be? Like, this is really really ridiculous so a lot of times a lot of things that happens when you have an accident or your truck break down it be shop time shop time will kill a business especially if they don't have loaner trucks now if they have loaner trucks that's cool but in my situation i could have got a loaner truck from rider but rider is so expensive the load that's on the load board at usa to me it's not worth it i would have lost more than i gained because if I was kind of losing a little bit with the lease I had, why would I uh, still have the, well, the lease payments were deferred. So as far as people that have lease, you know, some leasing companies will defer your payment. Defer mean they'll put it on hold and they'll add it to the end of the lease if you finish the lease and buy it out. They'll defer your payment. But I believe my insurance payments is still rolling. So... It's like, man, it's, it's, it's a lot of overhead. It's a lot of overhead. And all that, a lot of times, major, some of that stuff still rolls no matter if you're down or not. So it's like, it can really put you in debt. It can put you out of business. It can stress you out. It can bring you to your knees. All that stuff will bring anybody to their knees. You try, you try having a bunch of fixed costs that's going to roll no matter what other than maybe the deferred truck payment. Some companies don't even defer the payment. They still keep them rolling. And then you still got personal home bills. You might got kids, a wife. You might got, for women that take care of these sorry ass men, you might got a nigga at home. I'm sorry, a husband at home. 
So, I mean, it's stuff that keep rolling. And if you don't have the money coming in, because obviously that truck was your income, and now you out of your income, what is going to happen? You getting, get on your knees. You get brought to your freaking knees. You are under submission. Like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And like I said, a lot of people, they end up quitting to where they say, you know what, bump this company stuff for right now. I can't do this. So either they'll give up the trucking path of business and get into another set of business, or they'll just say, forget business altogether and become a company driver. I met a lot of guys out here and they said that they gave up. Um, they gave up being a lease operator on the op because they said it's just too much stress. They said it's too much stress especially the ones that had their own authority. Cause that's a whole different beast in itself. It's one thing just to be playing like, not to say playing like, but it's one thing to just have your LLC and you know, have your business name and, and all that stuff. But when you add own authority, meaning your own DOT numbers, your own MC numbers, like you are respond, you add that much more liability onto trying to like you, you will be considered a courier then when you get your own, your own authority. And that alone can bring more heat, heat, not heat, but heat to the situation because, you know, you still like insurances are a lot more um, like you're really more responsible that much more when it comes to your own authority. And then you get audited. You know, you got audits for your logs and then you audits for your taxes. Then you got your IFTA, all that stuff. Keep rolling. Got to pay quarterly taxes. A lot of times, if you run it under a company's authority, you know, they, they can take care of the after for you. But when you got your own numbers, you're responsible for everything. That's why, if you notice, a lot of companies, especially if it's power only, they pay you a little, not, not a whole lot more, but a lot of times be a little bit more on the percentage of the load. I guess so for all the stuff you're responsible for. And you do got some companies where they'll give you 100% of the line haul. What is it, 100%? Yeah, the line haul, because you got the line haul, and then you got the fuel surcharge. But you, no matter what, whether you lease or not, you get a, you should always get 100% of your fuel surcharge anyway. But as far as the line haul, some places, if you got your own authority, will give you 100%. But I guess so, because you're taking on 100% of the liability and responsibility. So, it's a lot. It's a lot. Don't think that, you know, you see trucks going down the road or you see these owner operated guys or you see these lease operated guys or these guys that own a truck or finance a truck you looking like wow you got all this money i want to be like you and grant some people are doing goddamn freaking extraordinarily well but a lot of us be struggling through especially when you're first starting when you first starting that is the roughest patch in your life because it is tough trucking business is not something that is easy unless you had a great mentor or you got somebody like you up your day puppet and they pulling your strings to walk you through every single thing that you need to go through. But when you somebody that don't have no mentors or you ain't got nobody to kind of walk you through it and you kind of have to learn the hard way, that stuff is tough. It's tough. And, and like I said, God forbid you don't get in an accident or you have a major breakdown like your engine give out or, or your uh, your death system. The death system brings people to their knees too. Like having these newer trucks, man, and with the death system, a lot of these death systems, when they like go out on you, that puts brings people to their knees too. I mean, death problems can go from probably three grand, probably up to 20 grand, depending on the type of death system you got. That's why a lot of these, these guys get older trucks. I think, what is it? I could be wrong, but I'm going to try to guess it. I believe it's 2010 and below is the trucks that don't have the... Uh, that's why whenever I do decide to get back to this and I do decide to buy a truck, bump the new trucks. I'm getting me an older truck, and by then, I'm going to learn how to work on them suckers myself, and I'm going to really inspect the truck, take the truck to get inspect it secondarily and i'm gonna make, hopefully make sure i get a good truck but if something break down on that thing like the brakes or the alternator or the turbo or or just anything the starter whatever and the only thing i probably wouldn't be able to do is the engine because you need some serious manpower and equipment to move a big old truck engine and then even if an engine do go out the engine the parts alone cost a whole lot so you gotta have your capital save up like there's an art there's an art to being successful 
and starting your trucking business. It's not some, well, I'm going to take a chance. Maybe I'll do good. You know, maybe nothing. You better have a you have you better have it planned out and know which route you're gonna take, why you taking it, and if this plan don't work, if your truck break down, what's plan B? Always have a plan B to fall back on. Cause this trucking industry is so volatile. Anything can happen at any given moment to where rates can crash, to where you're not getting money the way you, you need to. So you need to have a reserve until rates come back up. It's so much. It's so much. And it's, so many regulations take place to where it can dip into your pocket. Just like these stupid ELDs. I mean, I'm sure before ELDs came into effect and people was running on paper logs, they was probably making triple, double than what they making now. Now the fucking government done put these ELDs into effect. It done cut people money down dramatically. And now everybody got to run on the stupid ELDs unless you exempt. And you got to have, what is it? I think a 2000 a 2000 truck and below to be exempt from ELD. But even that, that is still heavily regulated. <sighs> so yes, man, don't, don't, matter of fact, that you can't, you can't control that of getting brought to your knees in the event that something happened. But what I can say that kind of can be in your control is have a plan B. Cause just cause you looking at me and I done got brought to my knees and this is not you, don't mean it can't be you. Never think like, oh, that ain't me. That never happened to me. You be the first one to happen to you because you, you got that mouth. You being stubborn. Oh, it never happened to me. Yeah, all right. When it happened to you, I want to see how you handle it. So have a plan B. If this happened, maybe I could do that. If this happened, all right, I probably could do that. All right, well, if I can't drive trucks no more, I got the skill set to do that. Or, uh, well, let me save some money for a reserve. So if my stuff go out, whatever, I got enough money to sit back and still be good until I figure out what I'm going to do. So, yeah, pretty much in a nutshell. So, all right, y'all, I hope this helps anybody, you know, because it can happen to anybody. It can happen to a new person just starting out trying this, this trucking business thing. It can happen to a dang veteran that's been doing good for 10 years straight and all of a sudden he get brought to his knees. So don't think... It can't be you. It can be you, Miss Lady. It can be you, Mr. Guy. So just be prepared. Don't be foolish about it. Be a smart entrepreneur. Be a smart business person and have a plan B in case things bring you to your knees. So I might be brought to my knees, but I ain't gonna be on my knees for long. So, all right, y'all. I'll check back in with y'all soon. So, deuces.